Well, the war is also having a big impact on healthcare more widely, of course, uh, in Ukraine. And with modern drugs, people with HIV live long, full, healthy lives. But without those drugs, uh, their health and very lives are at stake. Now, Ukraine has got some of the highest prevalence rates of HIV in the world outside of Africa. As much as 1% of the entire population has the virus and it was already struggling with the burden of HIV. Now, of course, with drug supplies disrupted after the invasion, support for those living with HIV, TB and other serious conditions has effectively collapsed. We're joined uh, now by the Alliance for Public Health Executive Director, Andrei Klepikov. You were based in Kyiv, you're now in Lviv in the west of the country. Thank you for being with us. It's always so critical for us to hear from people on the ground in Ukraine. And we've seen these horrific images this morning uh, of what's happened to civilians. Can you just start by giving us a sense of the situation uh, on the ground in Ukraine and, and what people are witnessing? Good morning. Yes, uh, situation is very uh, terrible because we saw a huge tragedy in, in Bucha, in the Kyiv suburb where Russians uh, actually practice genocide, killing uh, men between the age of 18 and 60. And of course, uh, if we are talking about uh, people with HIV, with TB, people who use drugs, they were vulnerable even in a normal life. So during the war, their vulnerability increased by times. Uh, and most of the people living with HIV actually located in eastern and southern part of Ukraine uh, affected the war the most. As you say, you know, Ukraine has got a very serious HIV epidemic. I think more than 250,000 people living with the virus. Just give us a sense of how difficult it is to get these crucial drugs to those who need them. Uh, it is a very challenging task because uh, in the areas directly affected by the war, uh, uh, over 100,000 people with HIV are living. Uh, 59,000 out of them are receiving antiretroviral treatment. So it's not only governmental uh, uh, agencies, medical facilities, but also NGOs like mine uh, delivering uh, IRV drugs to the patients. It is difficult uh, and it's very challenging because we are continuing to do this even in the occupied territories. Unfortunately, it's dangerous. Uh, and just a couple of days ago, our partner organization faced a situation where uh, a van with volunteers delivering medicines and humanitarian aid was shelled and two people unfortunately died. That's Very good. really awful to hear that you know, aid workers, people who are delivering essential medical supplies coming under fire. Can you give us a bit more information about what happened with that attack or is it impossible for you to do so? Uh, it was uh, attack, intentional attack, because clearly uh, there was uh, clearly not a military convoy. It was humanitarian convoy. It was clearly visible, and it was uh, attacked uh, on the way to convoy to Chernigiv. That's the situation uh, our partner organization faced, and this is our van which was destroyed. But uh, destructions are huge all, uh, all uh, over all areas, including Mariupol, where uh, uh, all uh, locations were destroyed to, to dust, actually, to nothing. Uh, clinics in Nikolaev were destroyed, in Kharkiv, in Izum, which was already mentioned uh, uh, by uh, MP colleague from Ukraine. Uh, terrible things are going on, and civilians, medical personnel, social workers are suffering more and more from this war. Have you been able to get supplies into Mariupol? And um, I think there are almost 5,000 people living with HIV there. Or is the situation just too difficult and too dangerous to get those supplies in? Uh, unfortunately, Russian forces uh, uh, da, 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 don't allow to go in. So we helped those patients who managed to escape and now move to Dnipro or Zaporizhia or other locations. Uh, but unfortunately, access to Mariupol is so difficult. We are helping some people, even known with HIV, but for example, suffers from this uh, terrible attack on, on, uh, on shelter uh, located in theater. It was on the news and uh, uh, there were terrible stories, so we helped people to evacuate from, from there. HIV positive and not HIV positive. We, in this situation, we are helping everyone. Yeah, you're in the business of saving lives, right? 
So exactly. that's what you do uh, as an organisation such as yourself. What stories are you hearing from the people that you are meeting in these desperate situations? Uh, <clears throat> needs uh, of people uh, increased substantially. Uh, now they are uh, requiring not only medications, but also uh, food, uh, housing or shelter, uh, some support, psychological support, mental health support. Uh, so uh, we need more resources uh, uh, and we are having this uh, appeal hosted by organization uh, Frontline Aid. So uh, please call in to everyone to, to support us with, uh, with uh, checking the website uh, frontlineaid.org, uh, donate. Uh, it's important to provide uh, more resources because so far our resources are limited and we are working in all provinces of Ukraine uh, uh, more than in, uh, with 100 uh, local organizations based on the ground. How many people are at risk of running out of the drugs that they need and as a result can you put any figure on the number of lives that could be at risk? Uh, risk is very high. It's the highest, I think, in the world. So if we are talking about uh, uh, HIV patients, as I said, uh, 59,000 uh, people are on IRT in the areas affected by the war. And uh, less than 40% uh, managed to move outside uh, of, of these war zones. So we are talking about uh, uh, tens of thousands of people at risk. Uh, we use different uh, modalities to deliver drugs where it's possible through mobile vans, through smaller delivery, even through uh, mail where it's possible. Uh, but the key thing is the logistics because uh, unfortunately in some places like to Mariupol, access is uh, restricted. Tens of thousands of people at risk. Thank you for coming on the program and speaking so powerfully. Uh, it, it's one of those consequences of the war, isn't it, that perhaps you may not initially think about, but so many lives at stake. So thank you for coming on uh, the programme today.